a special shout out to my mom who is in the audience tonight and uh, she has not heard this story. After living in Vancouver, Canada for six years, I learned that I detest winter. It's miserable. It's not that pretty snow that you get in the movies or even in, in Montreal or, or Toronto. No, Vancouver winter is wet and rainy and miserable. And it happens two thirds out of the year. It's awful. The year was 2010 and it was the worst winter of my life. I was 24, 25 years old and I had just graduated from university. I have the most useless degree, if you like money. Um, I finished school with an acting degree. I was working three jobs, only two of which paid me minimum wage at that because the third job was pursuing acting my dream. And I did a lot of stuff for exposure, for free basically. And then I was also crashing and burning every single audition I walked into. And I was heartbroken, like really broken. I was physically, mentally, spiritually exhausted. Did you know that you can actually be depressed and not know it? Not know it until your body tells you. So one ordinary night, I was sitting in front of the TV and I reached to the back of my head to scratch it and my fingers grazed on something that was not supposed to be there. Just flesh, smooth flesh where hair should be. I ran to the mirror and I saw a bald spot right here, just there, about the size of an egg and as smooth as a baby seal. So I freaked out. And my first reaction was to call my mom. Because if you can't call your mom when you're balding, who can you call? <laughs> so I called her, I freaked out. She also freaked out though, which made me freak out even more. So we were both just kind of freaking out. And she did the only thing that a mom can do when she lives half a world away. She was living in Manila, by the way. She bought me a ticket home. That left like a week later. So a week later, I, I found myself in Manila and I had a doctor's appointment right when I landed basically. And me and my mom were sitting in the doctor's office and she was explaining to me that I had alopecia. So if you don't know what alopecia is, it's actually an autoimmune disease where your white blood cells think that your hair follicles are diseases basically. And the white blood cells attack it, which causes hair to fall out. And it's brought on by emotional stress and trauma. My mom was sitting next to me, looked at me and she went, you're 25 years old. What do you have to be stressed about right now? And I didn't want to tell her that I was broken. But I think she saw it in my eyes. <laughs> so we were at home later that afternoon and she said to me, what are you doing in Vancouver? Just come home. Put away acting just for now and come home for a little while. And I was livid. I was so angry that she said that because coming home meant giving up. And I had worked six years in, in school, cultivating my relationships with mentors, with agencies, with directors, with theater producers. All of the suffering would have gone down the drain if I had chosen to leave. I mean, a part of me wanted to give it all up, but my pride didn't want to let go. The next day, I organized something that you probably think is a weird thing to do, but I organized a fortune telling, telling session for myself. I know you think that's weird, but this woman that I have been going to since I was 16 who reads my cards, she's really good. <laughs> So she comes over to my house and my mom is sitting with me for emotional support and uh, the fortune teller's name is Mende 
and there is no chit chat, there's no small talk, there's no catch up session. She sits down, she immediately starts placing down cards. The first one she goes, oh no. Next one, oh, that's bad. Third one, oh, you're at a crossroads. Next card she put down, she says, you have to go. You need to leave. Whatever you're doing now, you need to stop what you're doing and you need to go. And my mom who was sitting beside me went, oh, I told you, this is the writings on the wall, you have to go. <laughs> so at that moment, I decided that I needed to let go. I needed to let go of all the pressure I was putting on myself to succeed, my pride in wanting to do better than my peers, and the mentality that I had to work myself to death just to survive. I needed to let it all go. So I said to her, okay, what's, what's next? What do I do now? So my mom bought me another ticket. This time to Australia, Melbourne, where my sister was. And my mom said to me, you're gonna go help her with her new baby for three months. Three months ended up being six. And I did some random things like learning how to kite surf. I kite surfed for six months. I fell in love again. And it was the best summer of my life. And when I started to feel better, I moved to Singapore where I decided I am never gonna be an actor again. Acting, I'm done, I'm done. I'm gonna find a real job and I'm going to be happy. In 2013, it had been about a year that I gave up acting. Singapore Repertory Theater calls me out of the blue and they say to me, we have your file. You sent it to us five years ago. Would you like to audition? So I auditioned, I got the part and I've been a professional actor ever since. <laughs>